Before the break, I was chatting with WSORBC assistant conductor Monica Chen about the upcoming Sistema Winnipeg Benefit concert. Uh, just a few days later, on Wednesday the 14th, she'll direct the University of Manitoba Symphony Orchestra in a concert of their own, which features two current Days Hotel Faculty of Music students, composer Kelson Hatter and pianist Fen Yen Chang, who are now with me in studio. Hello all, thanks for being here. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, so, Monica, I want to go back to you first. Um, this is the first chance that we've had the opportunity to chat about your leadership of UMSO, which which came at the start of your tenure with the WSO. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the group of players and what it's like working with the, the student musicians. It's been really fantastic. And when I first joined the faculty, Jackie Dawson, the director of bands, she told me that this is you couldn't hope for a better group of students to work with. And I wholeheartedly agree with her on that. It's been very musically rewarding because we go through not just the the very essential skills of orchestra training, but also just, you know, how to make music with your peers. Uh, it sounds like a, a really important time in, in young composers' lives, right? Because so many of them are coming from, you know, band programs, but to move to the orchestral world, that is a, a different step entirely, right? Yeah, I would say so in terms of the the soloistic nature, especially for the winds and brass players, when you're surrounded by many of your peers in band and then having to step up to that next plate in orchestra is quite different because you really have to take on kind of the leadership role yourself within your section and then knowing how to share that leadership with the other principals of your section particularly for strings as well, how to lead your group or how to follow and being one in the whole orchestra sending. So there are two students who are featured rather prominently in this program. And I first want to swing the mic over to uh, Kelson Hatter. Uh, Kelson, you're in which year of your studies uh, at the U of M? Uh, so I've been at the Distal's faculty for about five years now, but this is the fourth and final year of my degree in uh, music composition. And who are you studying with? Uh, Gordon Fitzell. Oh, okay, wonderful. Um, we know, we've had Gordon on the show many a time. He's a great composer yeah, himself. Oh, he's fantastic. Uh, when did you start writing music? Oh, it was like a forever ago. So I, I started way, way long ago. Uh, I guess the initial like uh, exposure to me doing music would have been uh, recording like uh, keyboard in my friend's like house, it wasn't good. It wasn't good music, but uh, from there that kind of ignited the spark. I did a bunch of electronic production and then I started writing proper sheet music uh, when I got into the faculty about five years ago. Well, I, I was reading your bio and that did strike me. You know, you've done a fair bit of work in electronic music. It's yes. something that you continue today. Mm -hmm. uh, have you done much orchestral writing? Uh, so I have done some studying of uh, orchestration under uh, David Byrne through his or orchestration class and done orchestral exercises. And then I previously did uh, a little bit of writing for the Wind Ensemble just as a uh, compositional project uh, one or two years ago. That one wasn't in concert, but I did write a piece for them. So I've had a little bit of experience, but this is my first time with orchestra. And what's that experience been like? Is it a little daunting? Did, does your electronic music influence your orchestral writing? What's, what's that been like bringing it all together? So I find that I, in terms of how the electronic music kind of background uh, influences it, I find I write in uh, set grooves. Monica might feel this, but there are basically in lots of sections of it, there's a set groove. And then I like to kind of pull away from that. So there's a, maybe a four bar chunk that you'll have an ostinato going and in the double basses or something like that. And then I will pull away from that. So there's that kind of looped format that kind of weasels its way in there. But I find it's interesting to work with that and then so, uh, sort of find ways to move away from it and kind of break beyond those loops. Now, I, I'm wondering if you can speak a little bit um, to this work of yours that's going to be um, performed. The, the world has not ended. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about how the world has not ended. So I think it's actually uh, principally about uh, nihilism or at least my uh, take on on nihilism, because I find that, uh, you know, in our present world, there's a lot of conflict and that has, uh, you know, economically, socially and that uh, and the like that has kind of left people around my age feeling very, uh, you know, doom and gloom about the world. There is this kind of persistent nihilism that I find is uh, antithetical to making positive change, because if you're kind of in that mindset where there's not a future for you, if you are constantly uh, just in this despair, if you're consumed by it, you're not going to be able to work towards positive change. So I wanted to kind of tackle with that idea. And so in the piece, this arises uh, in this kind of dialogue between a theme representing nihilism and a theme representing hope. And they uh, clash with each other. They're in conflict. They're in conversation. And uh, 
in in the end, hope does actually win out. Not to give spoilers for the mm-hmm. piece, but uh, it's it's kind of a more it's it's optimistic, but I would say it's cautiously optimistic in the end. I, I leave some lingering doubt there because I feel like it's not going to be, you know, I think there's a better future beyond us. I think we'll be able to get through present turmoil, but I think there will still be things we'll be working on and struggling with into the future. Uh, this is a, a, a world premiere, right? <laughs> yes, world premiere. A world premiere happening, uh, well, a week tomorrow on the 14th. Yes. Uh, very excited for you. Uh, there is another uh, guest with us here in the studio, uh, Fanyan Chang, a, a master's student. Uh, Fanyan, we last spoke, I think, three years ago, ahead of a virtuosi show. You were an undergraduate student then. Uh, here you are, a, a master's student studying with Dr. David Moroz, is that right? Yes. Uh, so I finished my undergrad in composition, and then now I'm doing piano performance. Yeah. Can you tell us about what that experience has been like thus far? Because as you were just alluding to, I, I know you're a, a player with a wide variety of interests. You're a teacher, you're a composer, you're a pianist. What are you concentrating on in, in your master's studies? Well, I'm concentrating on getting my second recital done, <laughs> trying to finish the degree. Uh, in terms of the repertoire that you're tackling? Ah, well, I just finished my uh, first recital a few months ago. And uh, now I'm trying to get the Mendelssohn. And then after this, I'll think about new rep for my second recital. I'm thinking of uh, picking up, uh, what was it, Agosti's arra- uh, transcription of Stravinsky's Firebird. Mm, okay. That one seems fun. <laughs> sure, yeah, it seems fun. That's one way to put it. Uh, a challenge as well, certainly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just mentioned uh, the, the Mendelssohn, the piano concerto number one in, in G minor, that you're going to be performing with Umso. What can you tell us about this work in terms of what you've learned in, in, in prepare, preparing for the performance? Well, this, um, let's say, it, it has two kind of contrasting characters. It has the fiery, fast uh, scalar arpeggios, and then it has more gentle um, uh, second theme that I think it interplays nicely together. This is music of a, a 21-year-old Mendelssohn, uh, who's, who's younger than you when he wrote it. I mean, we know he was uh, an incredible prodigy and just this incredibly precocious talent. It's also pretty groundbreaking at the time because it goes one movement into the next, right? Is this sort of kind of yeah. continuous structure. D- do you require a sort of like stamina? I mean, there is that sort of dazzling um, kind of arpeggiation that is very prominent in this work. It is a brilliant. There's all sorts of runs and, and scalar passages. Um, how does it feel under the hand? Does it Is, is it one that's... I don't want to say easy to play. That's not the right way to put it. It's it's, it's not. But how, how does it feel for you in, in, in performing and preparing for it? So playing Mendelssohn is much different uh, than playing Beethoven. It's uh, The finger work is more light. So you, you don't require too much like uh, muscling or stamina. It, it's actually the challenge is to play without um, like trying too hard. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to get in the way of the music. That's right. Um, I mean, so. that speaks to, I think, um, Mendelssohn's version of, of, of pianism, right? I mean, there's just something so um, light about yeah. his writing, and there is something so youthful about it, and maybe that's just because he was youthful when he wrote it, but mm-hmm. it sort of continues through his, you know, short, um, unfortunately short career. Uh, so there is uh, music of, of Kelsen's, there's music of uh, Mendelssohn's on the program, Monica, I want to swing the mic back to you to close things out. What else is on the program uh, a week Wednesday? So as you mentioned, the Mendelssohn is a very one string. It's three movements all connected into one and one journey. And I thought I'd end this program with Schumann 4, which is likewise. It is also one long symphony, no break. It connects straight from the first all the way to the last. And the motives that are shared between all of them. You can hear them coming out in all the different movements because he wrote it to be essentially one large sonata allegro form. And so this Schumann, this whole program kind of ties itself together in this, what I termed Forward Unto Dawn is the title of this program, going from some very dark places, starting off each, uh, both the concerto and the symphony, but really going forward towards a more optimistic ending, just like with Kelsen's piece. Sounds like a, a wonderful program. Again, taking place next Wednesday, February 14th, 7.30 p.m. at Westworth United Church. That's 1750 Grosvenor Avenue. Uh, tickets are $20 for general admission, $15 for uh, seniors, and $5 for students. A wonderful opportunity to see some uh, young musicians and uh, hear some, well, brand new music and some uh, favorites as well presented by UMSO, the University of Manitoba Symphony Orchestra, led by Monica Chen. Monica Fanyan Kelson, thanks so much for joining me this morning. 
Thank you. Thank you for having us.